Hey guys, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, I want to talk about the unraveling of the global monetary system and why it's so obvious. And I will start by just giving you an example from the real world, what's going on today in Europe, because it's going to come very soon to the US and to the rest of the Western world because of the reason that I will explain later on. And, you know, imagine that you are a family in Germany. You know, and Germany is the heart of Europe where all the manufacturing is taking place. And you earn 4,000 euro in a month. And up until recently, your monthly fuel bill was maybe 300 euro a month. And now it went up to 1,000 euro a month. At the same time, the price to heat up your home, price of groceries, price of everything that you buy on, on a monthly basis is going up in price. You are bankrupt. You can't take that kind of uh, increase in monthly payments and expect to survive. It's just not going to happen. You were not very wealthy and rich before. You were already living month to month. Maybe you had a small savings going on, but you were not strong to begin with. And now your fuel price has uh, tripled, your electricity price uh, fifth-tupled or sixth-tupled, and everything else is going up in price at the same time. And at the same time, it's very likely that you're going to be um, laid off this, this winter because we already see that a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, businesses in Germany are receiving electricity bills that they cannot afford. And if, if they, if they were smart and they made a contract with the electricity company to get a fixed electricity bill, the company broke the contract because the amount of money they would lose on that contract, it's better to break it off and pay some kind of fine than to keep the contract. And businesses that got, let's say, two years ago, electricity bill of 30,000 euro are getting now electricity bills of half a million euro or one million euro. And you can see this, uh, these examples all over the Internet of businesses saying we can't pay our electricity bills. And, it's, and then the German economic minister is coming and telling them, well, you can just shut up, shut, don't work for one winter. It's not a problem. You know, a lot of <laughs> this is a joke. A lot of businesses can't shut down. If you have food, the food is going to rot. If you have millions of euros stuck in, 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 in food, you, can't, in, you have to store it in, in some refrigerators, right? You have to pay the electricity or else all of your uh, supplies will go bad. And, and there is a lot of other examples uh, why you can't shut down. If you shut down, you basically have to file for bankruptcy and close down the business. And all of this has been set in motion in 2008. Um, the collapse that we see today. But the thing that brought us to 2008 and the things that brought us to 2022 have started way before that. I would say it started in the 1960s. In the 1960s, Europe called uh, bullshit on, on the US. It started with France, uh, with their president, Charles de Gaulle who said you printed too much dollars and you don't have the gold to back it up because back at the time we were on a gold standard. This gold standard started in 1944 when the US, uh, when, when the US and allies set after the war in the uh, Bretton Woods agreements and they agreed that the US dollar would become the world reserve currency. The reason for that was that the US was holding uh, two thirds of the entire gold uh, of the gold of, in, of the entire world at the time. It was over 20,000 tons. And in 1959, Charles de Gaulle called the US on their bluff, said you don't have all the gold that you uh, promised. You have been printed too much dollars. You don't have the gold to back it up. I want my gold back. And once he did it, a lot of other European countries followed suit and started asking their gold back. And during the 1960s, um, about two thirds of the United States gold was redeemed and sent back to Europe. The gold reserve went down from about 20,000 tons to 8,000 tons. And as we all know, in 1971, redemption of dollars back into gold was halted. It was supposed to be temporary, but it ended up being permanent. And gold was revalued at the time from $35 an ounce to uh, 42 and before that the redemption was closed, we can also, also see that there was something in the 60s, it was called the, golden Lond uh, the London Gold Pool. 
And that was basically a scheme by central banks in Europe and the US trying to hold the price of gold artificially at $35 an ounce to keep that uh, scheme, that theft, that printing of money, the system that they had going on for longer. And of course that failed. And we all know what happened. The, golden Lond uh, the, the London gold pool failed. It was a big scandal. So in 1971, the dollar went off the gold standard and you could say that it became a full fiat currency which was backed by nothing but by faith but faith at that time was low and inflation was high and what the uh, volcker who was the equivalent of power of today the fed chairman in the united states had to do was let the free market determine interest rate so he left control of interest rate and the free market have pushed the interest rate all the way up to 20%. And that managed to regain confidence in the dollar and keep the system going up until today. Or we can say up until 2008 when we saw major problems. We actually seen major problems before because we had the dot-com bubble in 2000. Now, something that you have to remember, until the 90s, China and Russia was not a part of the global monetary system. They were not a part of the dollar system. They have only joined in the 90s. And during the early 2000s, or even we'd say late 90s, they were very concerned about the accumulation of debt because debt was accumulated at ever growing pace. And when they are part of that system, they are taking a huge risk. And we actually know because there has been people from inside of Russia who have wrote about it, people that were high in the office, that Russia has offered China to opt out of the dollar system in the early 2000s, 2006. And China declined. They, dis they wanted to play on both sides at the time. And only in 2011, it was very obvious to them that the dollar is not going to last for very long. They have to do something else. And they have stopped to purchase U.S. debt. They have stopped to purchase U.S. treasuries. Uh, China, along with Russia. And at that time, that made them from allies into enemies. And at the, at the time that we are today, they have every incentive in the world to destroy the dollar system and to start their own system. So they can benefit from having the world reserve currency or at least take the benefit from the us because the us is competitor to them so this was set in motion like i said a long time ago and now the excessive debts of governments citizens and corporations are coming uh, are coming due and with the increase in interest rate people can simply not pay it back but the majority of people don't believe that this is still a major problem if they believe that this would be a major problem interest rate wouldn't be at uh, three or four percent interest rate would be where they are supposed to be at 20 percent or money would have to be devalued at a tremendous rate we would have to have inflation at a tremendous rate and every, all these things that are based on debt would have to collapse like housing i mean even powell agrees now that housing is a bubble don't you think that is crazy the Federal Reserve Chairman is saying that the housing prices have to go down. The situation must be very dire if he is making that statement. It's so obvious to everyone. It's so obvious that he has to acknowledge it. Because in, even in 2007 and six, the Fed were not acknowledging that housing was a bubble. They actually said that housing is going to go up forever. They said it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep going up. Basically, it's cheap. But we know what happened after that. The housing bubble collapsed and later after that we had the financial crisis in 2008 maybe you know this famous phrase the dollar is our currency but it's your problem because the dollar is the united states currency but it's the problem of the rest of the world because they have to use the dollar because it's a world reserve currency for every transaction so when france is trading with let's say Saudi Arabia or when France is, or when Germany is trading with Argentina, they have to settle the transaction in dollars. And because they have to do that, because it's, it, that's the only system we have at the time, then they have to suffer inflation and they have to suffer all the, uh, you know, they have to, to get those dollars. They have to 
convert their currencies into those dollars, creating artificial demand, which strengthen uh, the purchasing power for the for anyone who lives in the U.S. on the expense of other countries. So that's where the that's why this sentence comes from. It's our currency, but it's your problem. But Zoltan Pozar, who is an ex-Fed, and today he works at Credit Suisse, have said that. Today it's changing into it's our commodities and it's your problem. Because sure, by placing an artificial constraint that can be changed by the swipe of a pen or let's say by a creation of a new system, which is not so hard to do, a new payment system who would change the dollar. You just have to get a lot of players to agree. But once they agree, it's all the basically technicalities. And commodities fuel, energy, the basis of modern society. These are things that are needed. These are things that cannot be created by a swipe of a pen or by agreement of a group. You have to create the factories. You have to create the mining operation. And that takes a long time. And those things are mostly in the, West, in, in the second and third world. Why? Because Western countries, US and Europe, have been following a crazy idea that they don't want pollution and they don't want CO2. It's not even pollution. I mean, no one wants pollution. Who wants pollution in the air? Do you want to breathe bad air? No, they are against carbon, which is what we exhale after we breathe in and what the cow is burping after it ate some grass. This is the kind of insanity we're following because of some climate change that no one can see and no one experience, but the news told us about it. So we believe it, or at least the average Joe believe it, because when it comes out, it's not so hot. It's not hotter than it's been, let's say, five or ten years ago, but the news told him there is global warming and that the crisis is happening. But Bill Gates will still buy a hundred million dollar mansion on the beach. And the insurance companies will not raise the insurance on those beach properties. But the news told you. And anyway, because of that crazy policy, we are not mining anymore, or we are mining much less than we used to do in the past. So because of that, all the mining is being done in the third world countries, in the second world countries. And now the, we have shifted willingly our power to them. And now they own the basic building blocks of modern society and how they're going to use it and all they need to do is to change the system and it's in their benefit to do so why would they keep listening to us idiots who wants everyone to go net zero <laughs> just today i heard norway want to shut down their wind farms because when there is a really strong wind the wind the wind turbines just fall and breaks and it's dangerous and it doesn't work Imagine a technology is so stupid when there is no wind, you don't get electricity. And when there is too much wind, it just breaks after you invested tens or hundreds of millions of dollars into building those, those devices, which even on a, on a good days, they only have a lifespan of about 20, 25 years. And then you have a big problem what to do with them. So this is where we are heading. And all the other countries that are not in the West are piling up gold. They know where it's heading. If you, if you want to transact with someone and have a full confidence that you got what you want, you want to get paid with real money. Gold, which is payment by itself and not a promise to pay. When people were accepting dollars on a gold standard, they were accepting a promise. But the promise was very strong because the United States was backing it and there was no reason to think that they wouldn't give you your gold back until they didn't. And that's where we are heading to, folks. I hope you are prepared.